Welcome back. We're now in problem number 11. Let's see, at the top they write z, w, y, x. And they say, the sequence above may be changed in either of two ways. Either two adjacent letters may be interchanged, or the entire sequence may be reversed. So either like I could switch like W and Y, or I could just switch the order. What is the least number of changes needed to put the numbers into alphabetical order from left to right? Alphabetical order from left to right. So what, what is alphabetical order from left to right? Let's know our goal, because my I have it's been a while since I've sung my alphabet. So it's W, X, Y, Z. This is our goal. Right? So let's see what we can do. W, X, Y, Z. So we need to get W at the opposite end from so let's see if I could I could switch these two. And I would get Z, W, X, Y. No, 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 no. I want to get the W at the opposite end of. So we could switch Oh, we what we want to do is switch W and Y, right? And we will get Z, Y, W, X. Then you can switch X and W. You get Z, Y, X, W. And then the other option we can do is just reverse. And then we can reverse. And when we reverse it, we get W, X, Y, Z. And that's our goal. So that took us, that took us, it took us one step, two steps, three steps. So that's choice B. I'm not sure if that's the right answer. Let's see if I can do it in two steps. Let's see, if I reversed it, well, reversing doesn't really help you. Um, the bottom line is you have to, before you reverse, W, X, Y, Z. I mean, to move the Z all the way over to the other end, no, you want to just reverse. If you reverse this, and you reverse this, and you switch, I think that's the fastest possible way. I can, because you need, you need no matter what you do, no matter what you do, you have to move the W two steps away from the Z. You have to do that, right? Because the W is on the opposite end from the Z. So you have to move the W twice. That's going to take you at, at least two steps. And then you've got to switch, switch, the, switch the order. That's the third step. The other option, and it would be, be even worse if you didn't switch the order and you, had to, you wanted to move the Z, the other option is you could flip the Z and the W, and you would get you would get W, Z, Y, X. And then you could switch. You could switch. No, that's going to take you. You could switch the X and the Y, and you'd get W, Z, X, Y. Now, that's going to take you three or four steps. So I'm pretty sure we got the right answer. Write me, write me uh, a little note if I didn't. Next problem. The bottom line with that one, you have to realize you have to switch, move the W at least three away from the Z, and then you got to reverse it. So it's going to take you at least three steps. Problem number twelve. I hope I'm right on that one. How many cubical blocks, each with edges of length four centimeters, are needed to fill a rectangular box that has inside dimensions? So, each of my initial blocks looks like you know. I'll draw my cube as best as I can. Are four by four by four, and that is how many cubic centimeters? These are centimeters, right? So sixteen times four equals sixty-four centimeters cubed, or sixty-four cubic centimeters. And we want to fill a box that has inside dimensions. So we want to fill a box that has inside dimensions. This is my big box. Let's see, twenty by twenty-four by 32. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could you could just measure. You don't even have to do this first step I did. You could just say, well, how many of these small boxes are going to fit in this direction? How many are in this direction? And how many in this direction? And then multiply. And that's actually the fast way to do it. So you could say, if you said, instead of drawing it that way, you could, let me redraw that big box. But instead of giving it in centimeters, let me give it in how many of these boxes are going to go in this direction. So it's going to be. These are four centimeters each, and the base is 20, so it's going to be 20 divided by 4. It's going to be 5 in this direction. It's going to be 6 in this direction, 24 divided by 4. It's going to be 8 in this direction. So then you can just multiply. 5 times 6 is 30, times 8 is 240 of the boxes. The other way to do it 
is you could have multiplied 20 times 24 times 32. You could have said this equals 20 times 24 times 32, and then divided by 64. That would have been the other way of doing it, and it would have just required more math. And hopefully, that comes out to the same thing as 240. And that's choice D. If you ever find yourself on the SAT doing something that's really hairy or taking a lot of time, you're not necessarily doing it wrong, but there's probably a faster way to do it. Because they want you to be able to do these questions in like less than 30 seconds. I think you have time to do them in what, a little over a minute. 13. If 0 is less than n, 0 is less than n, which is less than 1, which of the following gives the correct ordering of square root of n, n, and n squared? You know what the easiest thing to do when they give you a problem like this is? Just try out a number. Try out a number like, well, do you know what a good number is here? Because we're going to have to take the square root of it. Let's take n equal 1 fourth, because it's easy to take the square root of 1 fourth. So if n is equal to 1 fourth, then what are these values? Square root of n is equal to 1 half, right? It actually equals plus or minus 1 half, but they probably mean the positive 1 half. n is 1 fourth, right? And what's n squared? n squared is 1 over 16. 1 over 16. I'm assuming that they mean the positive square root when they when they write it like that. So if what's what's the order of these? Well, the the smallest they want to do it right from smallest to biggest. So the smallest is n squared. Then the next biggest is square root of n. No, no, sorry. Then the next one is n, and then the next one is square root of n. And that's choice. That is choice e. And another way to think about it is when you have a fraction, and essentially that's what they're saying there, you have a fraction less than 1, or you have a decimal point, right? It becomes bigger when you take the square root, and it becomes smaller when you square it. That's the realization that, you know, so the, the squaring is going to be smaller than the number, which is smaller than the square root. That's kind of the, the underlying theme when a number is between 0 and 1. But if you didn't want to think too abstractly about it, just try out a number that works. Let's see, next problem. Problem number 14. Problem number 14. OK, so this is going to involve some drawing. Let me see if I can draw this pretty fast. So that's my y-axis. That's my x-axis. Then there's a bunch of lines. There's a, b, c. OK, so they're all at, they all intersect at, at, at 3. And then these 1, 1, 2, 3. Four, five, and six. And let me draw out all the all the lines. So the first line goes something like this. It goes from there. Then all the other ones. Let's see. The next one goes to three. Next one goes to three. Next one goes to four. Next one goes to five. They all go to y equals three. And the last one goes to six. At three. Okay. And they're saying in the figure above, what is the median of the slopes of all of those lines? OA, OB, OC, right? This, this they say this is. They write A, B, C, D, E. What is the median? So this isn't the average. Median is easier. Median is just what's the middle slope, right? So we could say, well, this, let me switch colors. Line A has the highest slope. Line B is a little bit lower. Line C is a little bit lower. The slope is getting a little bit lower every, as we go out, right? And you can figure that out by rise over run. The rise is the same in every case, and the run just gets bigger and bigger, right? The change in x gets bigger and bigger. So this has the highest slope. This has the lowest slope. And this has the middle slope. C, pretty easy. Oh, the median of the slope. So they want you to figure it out. So what is the slope of 3, of, of this one? So it's change in change in y so change in y is 3 over change in x which is 4 which is 4 sorry so it's 3 fourths so that's choice c the if you got this wrong maybe by accident you took the the mean or the average which would have probably wasted a lot of time as well i'll see you in the next video